Welcome back. Our Guinness Nigeria Limited is an iconic African company and significant part of the global Diageo PLC portfolio, renowned for its brands of unmatched quality. Guinness Nigeria is committed to enriching the communities within which it operates through investment and active participation in the positive evolution of society. Guinness Nigeria was first listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange in 1965 and via steady growth in its premium drinks portfolio now operates breweries in Benin, Lagos and Aba. I'm now being joined by the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the company, Mr. Peter Ndegwa, who will speak more to Guinness Nigeria's established and long-term commitment to Nigeria and, of course, Nigerians. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Right. Now, tell me, what is responsible for uh, the success of Guinness Nigeria? Uh, it's clear that Guinness Nigeria is a household name, whether that's at a corporate level or, or actually at a consumer level. I would say three things are responsible uh, for its success so far. Um, the first is uh, commitment uh, to long-term investment in, in Nigeria. Uh, we've been in this country for 65 years, uh, initially uh, imported uh, Guinness into this country. Then in 1962, we set up our first uh, brewery uh, here in Keja, uh, in Lagos. Uh, and we've never looked back uh, since then. Um, this was the, 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 the interesting thing about the brewery was that this was the first brewery out of, outside the British Isles. Uh, so Guinness and, uh, and Ireland have had a, a big heritage. Uh, and that's why Guinness Nigeria has, has, has been very successful. The second reason is our, is our brands. Uh, we are known as a consumer uh, business that has great brands, that uh, develops brands, and also as an innovation powerhouse. Uh, we've been known for innovations such as Origin, uh, which, has, uh, which took the market by storm. Mm. And I think the third one uh, is our people. We employ great people and give them a chance to succeed. Mm. Now, talk to me about um, some of the challenges you've encountered, you know, investing in Nigeria, and of course, the opportunities you foresee. Uh, clearly, Nigeria as an economy uh, mm. has been going some cha through some challenges, and we are no exception. We've been affected by some of those challenges. But I would highlight uh, just about two challenges, two main challenges that we are facing. From a consumer perspective, we've started to see consumers downtrade from higher priced brands to lower priced brands as their incomes come under pressure. And we've had to respond to that, whether that is through innovation in terms of better offerings uh, and more affordable offerings. And then the second one, which is a very significant one, is on costs. Uh, the currency has had a, 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 big, a big problem in the, in, the, in the past 18 months. And that has meant that we have had uh, to, to think about ways of addre addressing that. We've, in, we've increased our exports and also are starting to source locally in order for us uh, to substitute uh, previously imported raw materials. But as we are, um, we've operated in this country for a long time, we, we believe these are short-term challenges that will be overcome and we should be able to see, to see our way through. Right. Now, you've invested, you know, injected some significant fresh investments into the country. I know you have your breweries, Lagos, Aba, and now recently you launched another one in Benin City. What gives your company this level of confidence to actually see in the state of the economy to actually keep investing in the country? Yes, we have been uh, invested in uh, Benin, uh, in a door state, uh, for more than 20 years. The latest investment that we put in there is to produce spirits. Uh, in this country, we've been known uh, as a premium beer through Guinness, premium malt, uh, through Malta Guinness and also innovations such as Origin and Origin Zero. But now we are expanding into spirits. So the new brewery is to enable us to be able to offer spirits that are produced here in Nigeria, a lot of who, which were, were imported previously. Uh, so um, and the, the three, three launches that we have made since we installed the 12 million pounds uh, investment in the spirits facility in, in, in Benin is to produce local variants uh, of international number one brands. The first one is McDowell, uh, which is the, the biggest Scotch whiskey, uh, the biggest whiskey uh, from India, um, and that now is being produced uh, in, in, at our plant in Benin. The second one uh, is Man of X1 and Man of X1 chocolate, uh, which is a variant of an international brand that's now being produced here using local raw materials. And then the third one is uh, 
uh, a blend of moringa and citrus mm. uh, to produce uh, Gordon's moringa, uh, which now will be consumed. So consumers should look out uh, for the, for this brand. That's still coming. That, no, they have actually uh, okay. been been. Uh, uh, produced and are uh, selling into the market, but they're just about a month in. Okay. Uh, so we expect consumers to be seeing them on the shelves. And this will make us a total beverage alcohol where we are producing beer, uh, non-alcoholic beverages, innovations such as origin and spirits. Now, as an industry leader, what role do you think the private sector should actually play in contributing to you know, the communities where they exist? Yes. So, so the private sector, we believe, and, and that's one of the reasons why we've been uh, uh, established in this market for such a long time, should play a big role in complementing government and other stakeholders in order for us to create shared value across society, both for our employees, uh, our suppliers, but also our communities in which we operate with. And the three things that I'll, I'll mention are the first is on local raw materials. Uh, the government has talked about uh, diversifying the economy uh, away from oil. We have actually increased our local content from 40% two years ago to 70%. This, this includes primarily uh, raw materials such as sorghum, which we source from suppliers, but also packaging materials, which we started sourcing locally. We are starting to work with regional governments, uh, state governments, uh, to start to grow uh, materials such as uh, sorghum and also subsequently cassava that will allow us uh, to to participate in this. The, the second is, is actually on social investment. We have two big areas that, w that we invest in, in the communities. The first is water, what we call a water of life. We, we have had 25, more than 25 projects across, across the country that allow us to, uh, to, to deliver water, clean drinking water, to communities that will not, not have had water. And we have impacted a million uh, people in the past uh, 10 years. And then the third one, is on our responsible drinking campaign. We are an alcohol business. Uh, we we, we uh, market alcohol in a responsible way, and we've taken that responsibility very seriously. We've partnered uh, with a number of players in the market, such as the FRSC, uh, in, in, in driving responsibility uh, to ensure that there's uh, no drink and driving. Uh, and also uh, in ensuring that people understand uh, um, the role that alcohol can play responsibly in the society. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you. We Thank hope you, you keep the, fly, uh, the flag flying. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you very uh, much. That was uh, Peter Ndegwa, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Guinness, Nigeria. Well, it's on that note that we wrap up today's edition of the program and, of course, for the week. Thank you very much for being part of it. Do enjoy your weekend. I'm Chimizie Obi-Wagwan.